we test audio with us, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you you can say something so that I could check the call quality, how I am receiving your audio and all that. Right, uh, right. Well, it sound, sounds good on my end, so. Oh, hopefully. it sounds good? Amazing. Okay. Yeah. That's coming from this mic, so. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm going to quickly uh, stop the uh, quick time recording for a minute, check the audio quality and uh, revert back immediately. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, kindly stay online. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. This is the very first interaction that, that we are having here today for the interview. So uh, let yep. me introduce myself. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am uh, Krishnan Srinivasan, a uh, fine art photographer and a distance skater. Uh, distance skating kind of catched up uh, pretty late in my uh, uh, life. Like, uh, me too, me too. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like uh, 30. Eight or so, that's when I came to know about distance skating. And only by 37, wow. I started my skating. My, I had my very first uh, surf skate ever, you know, the board, short board as well. So that's the pretty short story of mine. And um, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> for the audience here today, like uh, we have a wonderful talent from uh, Chicago, Illinois, United States of America, USA. And uh, I know her through Instagram and uh, I've been following her for a while and uh, she was so genuine to accept me over there to follow. And uh, she added me on the uh, friends list on Facebook, you know, so generous. And uh, I know her through distance skating and uh, her talent is not limited only uh, to distance skating, you know, as I know. And as I watch the images of Facebook, you know, I learned quite a lot about her. So here we have uh, one Miss talented Amanda Latoria. And uh, ma'am, thanks for accepting my invite. And uh, so uh, I would like to give a small briefing on uh, the climate of uh, women skating in India in general, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, the privileged girls, you know, like who fall in the 4% of the category, you know, like where they can afford a lot of things, you know, they are distributed in the areas of uh, cosmopolitan cities and metropolitan cities. So they have access yeah. to skate parks and not all the metropolitan cities and cosmopolitan cities in India have skate parks, only very few. So. Uh, when you come down to the rural area or uh, to the uh, uh, normal cities where I live, you know, like we don't have access to skate parks. We don't have skate parks. Not even a flat ground right. where, and like, uh, people could go and, uh, you know, like uh, practice skating in general. You know, flat mm -hmm. ground tricks with skateboarding or like do freelance skating or like some longboarding, longboard dancing. You know, like sliding is downhill and everything. You know, it's off the roof, off the charts all the time. Yeah. So, and especially with the girls, you know, in the rural areas, they have too many challenges in their life. It's like uh, they don't make the decisions for themselves, you know, to begin with what to wear, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, a thing like sports and a thing like skateboarding, you know, like it has to have, uh, you know, an approach of a progressive mind and open mind. And uh, being in the rural area, you know, they, when the decisions are being made by uh, the people around them, you know, like they got to get a nod from their parents, maybe the relatives or their siblings, you know, and uh, there is a, a lot of problem with the caste, you know, like the races yeah, in the Western yeah. world, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. if they are marri uh, married, you know, like there are arranged marriage years, they don't date before the marriage. So they, it's like fixed on, fixed by the parents of uh, groom and the bride and they go with that. Yeah. And in that case, the women are, you know, sacrificing a lot, actually. They can't, uh, they have to get the nod from their husband, their in-laws, sometimes with their children's, you know. Think about skating then, you know. So those people, you know, uh, they are given with two choices, either to sacrifice, you know, live that life, and or uh, you know like pursue the uh, passion what they love you know facing all right. the socio-economic challenges and mm -hmm. girls with uh, you know such uh, 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 who are making the sacrifice you know like they pass on their dreams uh, they pass on their yeah. uh, freedom you know to their children and uh, the girls who make uh, the choice of pursuing the passion and the love they, what they love to do you know like they you know like kind of struggle a lot over here and yeah, very yeah. very few succeed actually and in the world of um, 
skating india is not uh, uh, you know like old or like uh, it's not facing problems with skating as in such you know like they are not much into the uh, skating where it involves a board and wheels you know they are much into inline skating roller skating quad skating slalom with those uh, uh, streams of skating not with the board yeah. and the wheels so you can imagine the scene with longboarding downhill or any other type you know surf skates or any other thing and with distance skating it's way too far they uh, people haven't been much aware of distance skating here yet. So, sure uh, sure yeah so and uh, why i'm talking about distance skating here is because like uh, i think it's not determined by gender and uh, it's not limited to any age and uh, and i had an experience of a 50 year old woman hopping onto my board uh, on a bridge when i was taking distracted with a photograph you know like that's oh, an amazing no. scene so i was so glad that it happened so uh, yeah uh, yeah so uh, why am i emphasizing with uh, such a boring monologue is just to <laughs> <laughs> no no where it's, are my good. Manners. it's good <laughs> anyways <laughs> it's, uh, because you are the guest here but uh, i just want to make sure like the very little casual conversation we are going to have today it's going to mean a lot to a lot of people over here you know it's going to inspire them like yes i want to do skating i want to be like her yeah. you know i want to do like yeah. distance skating distance skating is something yeah. anybody can do it they can pick up easily and you know do 100 meters yeah, 200 absolutely. meters already so so yeah. uh, without further ado uh let me, let us take uh, get into the interview session and uh, sure. uh ma'am uh it will be better to hear it from you like kindly introduce yourself uh, your routine your life what do you yeah, do for um, Yeah. yeah, I uh I live in Chicago and I work at um a hospital. I just do like um reception um for um radiology appointments and stuff like that. Pretty boring. Uh my work life is very boring. But uh <laughs> I do that um, you know, for a living and then uh yeah, I I skate. Uh, I usually my main skating these days is just uh, commuting to work and back mm -hmm. and uh, i just i just got a new setup about a month ago so i've been skating that a lot more to work and back um mm -hmm. uh, i do that i ride my bike you know and try to try to utilize the um the streets around here as much as possible because there's plenty of them so oh. but yeah i do i do that <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know what else would you like to know <laughs> uh not much like it's mostly with the distance skating and stuff how when did you get yeah. into distance skating i technically i've been on a board i've been skateboarding and longboarding uh for like 17 years now and i started when i was 21 which is pretty old for the skateboarding world so i feel your pain and uh i didn't get into like distance until about 2015 so i've only been doing it for wow. about 7 years now That's yeah amazing. but until then and i went through all of the um types of skating that you can get into i started off skateboarding mm -hmm. in like parks and stuff and i tried to get into that but that's a lot harder than it looks mm -hmm. so i didn't do very well at that but i kept that up for a while and then i got into longboarding and i tried to get into dancing longboard dancing and sliding and downhill i've i've touched on basically all of it mm -hmm. um but i was not very good at any of it <laughs> and you know part of it was just because it's just it's not as easy as it looks you know the people yeah. who do it really well and the people you see online like doing it doing all aspects of skating like really well i mm -hmm. mean that's it's it's so much more you appreciate that so much more after having tried all of these different types of skating mm -hmm. cuz it's really hard yeah. <laughs> but um but i tried all of it and um as i got older it got harder to continue the the harsher types of skating like mm -hmm. you know doing flip tricks or yeah. trying to drop in or Mm -hmm. or um you know and then even like sliding you know that hurts <laughs> when you don't yeah, do it well or yeah. like you're tearing yourself up like that hurts and and then downhill too you know if you don't do that very well then you're going to get hurt yeah, yeah and um i wasn't very good at any of it so <laughs> and as i got older i was like you know my body can't really take this anymore but i can't stop skating so that's how i got into to distance and, it's all about having racing. fun yeah, like like you, you need to yeah. yeah yeah of course so i went through all of that and now i'm mostly just pushing and yeah i don't really bother to do any cuz now i'm 38 and i don't you know not even going to bother to try <laughs> to you know do a do a kickflip or anything like that these days so okay. so yeah 
yeah, I totally understand. I might have said nothing much, but how do you balance your work life and uh, uh, the skating? Yeah, life? It, it, that's it's hard. We have a joke here. We say, "Man, you know, my work life is really getting in the way of my skating," <laughs> and uh, and it's so true because, like, you know, you have to go to work first, yeah. and uh, you know, skate second. So that's why commuting is is a really good way of like fitting it in. You know, just make it part of your commute. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if you have the, you know, the access to, to the roads and stuff like that, and I do, so I try to just do that. And then, you know, of course, you just fit it in on the weekends or whatever, or like with the um, virtual races right now, you know, mm-hmm. I just sort of get those done whenever, wherever, you know, I try mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. plan out a route in my head and, mm-hmm. and just do it, do That's it cool. whenever, you know. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So uh, what kind of board do you prefer? Like bracketed board or like uh, a drop down, a double drop or a top mount? Yeah. Which is your you know, go-to? I, yeah. I definitely lean toward um, like the drop boards, the mm-hmm. low boards, you mm-hmm. know, as low as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got a bracket set up um, about a month ago. It took me a couple months to get all the parts for it because they're expensive. But um, very true, very true. I finally, yeah, I finally got the Pantheon Bandito. Mm-hmm. And uh, cool. I've been using that. And that that's probably the peak. Like, I think this is like my favorite board so far. That's amazing. So, huh. yeah, the lighter and lower and bigger wheels, the better the ride. So Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. like... Uh, Tell us about your, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, the board, you know, like the board collections that you have. Uh, oh, God, I have. I can't, I can't even go through all the boards I've had in the <laughs> last 17 years. I, I, I can kind of give you an, a rundown. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, your boards, are, your boards are like your children. Like, you can't, you, you know, you don't really forget all of them exactly. Don't but um, <laughs> You create memories. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, my first, my very first board um, was from Walmart. Uh-huh. which is very, very cheap, <laughs> very cheap setup. But, you know, I wanted to just get started, and I had no idea where to start, so I bought a Walmart board. So that was good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, I moved on to an Enjoy, um, which is a skateboard brand. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, they're pretty great. And then I moved on to Almost. And then for long boards, I got a Sector 9 to start, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is a very good brand to start with, in my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. very good very mm-hmm. good selection for beginners. Mm-hmm. And then I moved on to Bustin. Mm-hmm. Um, they were a good brand out of New York. Mm-hmm. And then I moved on to Earthwing, also a, a New York brand at that time. I think they've moved since then. But mm-hmm. um, what else? Earthwing. I did a bunch of downhill setups. Mm-hmm. I did um, State, Line, State Line Skate Design is a small small company owned by one guy. And he, he made a really great boards. Okay. So I did that. And then, uh, oh, man, how many more? Now I'm on the spot and I can't think of them all. But I did like for distance stuff. I've done Pantheon. I had a trip, mm-hmm. and um, Subsonic. I have a Subsonic before oh. they they went out of business. And yep. then, uh, yeah, I had a Zenit uh, this past Zenith. year. Zenit oh, board, you know, nice. which is very similar to the trip mm-hmm. Pantheon mm-hmm. trip shape. So you know, I just gave that Zenith a try. Zenit AB, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So, but yeah, no, I've I've gone through so many. I probably have forgotten a couple, but like there were so many over the years because there's so much to try. Never mind. I will not even try to list all the wheels and trucks that I've tried to because <laughs> I have no idea. There's way too many. Yeah, a lot of combinations so. too. And uh, oh man, yeah. so many. But you have to you have to do that. Like, you know, I was always kind of anxious about buying things and not being sure if I like them. But that's like, that's part of it. That's how part of it. That's the, how it works. You know. you got to, it's more like trial yeah. and error, you know, like got to customize it. Yeah. Try own thing, thing. No, yeah. No. And if you can try stuff before you buy it, do it. Like if you can borrow your friend's stuff or whatever. But, you know, I didn't have that option because nobody I knew skated in the early days. So mm-hmm. I would just buy stuff and hope, hope I didn't regret it. And if I did regret it, then I could use that and be like, okay, so next time I want this, you know. So that's it yeah. is all part of the. The learning process yeah probably in those times uh, there are no online forums to discuss about all these things bro. Yeah. maybe that there were too. but uh-huh. yeah there were there were a lot of online um forums oh. and, and a lot of information a lot of people to connect with which was really great mm-hmm. that was the only reason i joined facebook i didn't join facebook until like 2011 which is pretty late compared to everybody else but yeah. that was why i joined i was like there are longboard groups there are people out there you know mm-hmm. that's how i got into like the community so oh. But yeah, it's always good to just get the get the equipment, see if you like it, and if you don't, you know, invest in something else next time. That's cool. 
does your pet yeah. accompany your rides like uh, uh your pet uh, uh do you take your pet to your rides or like oh my time? my dog <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you know i used to take her quite a bit but mm-hmm. she she's kind of she gets distracted and mm-hmm. she'll run in front of me sometimes while we're skating so that that gives me anxiety cuz she's so little um i don't want to like run her over but yeah no she loves it like she when i when i took her out um and i grabbed my board she would get really excited oh that's cool like yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, h- how many races you have been part of so far like can you name them oh man uh no <laughs> a <laughs> lot um since 2015 i started doing the adrenaline escape board marathon mm-hmm. um down in uh, la jolla california okay and that was that was amazing that was my first distance race and that was a, a marathon oh that was a full marathon and that that was amazing i'll never forget that i think that's what really cuz i had never done that kind of distance before mm mm-hmm. and i had never like traveled to another state to do a, a race like that before wow so that that really i think kick started my like appetite for for long distance races mm mm-hmm. um so i did that i did adrenaline a few years and then i moved on to um i didn't move on to to ultra till 2020 but um between all that i did my own races i did local races mm mm-hmm. mm um we had in chicago we had um i don't know if you've heard you've heard of the broadway bomb in in chicago uh, yes. new york yes. yes yeah we we for a couple of years several years we had the clark street bomb in chicago oh which was kind of our version of the broadway bomb mm-hmm. so we did that for a while um i didn't i didn't host that that was somebody else but um uh in between those you know that those times and like after those races kind of stopped i i created my own races mm-hmm. in the city and those were just outlaw unsponsored just everybody meet here and then here's the route and then whoever wins wins you know oh so i did a bunch i did a bunch of those i don't even know how many i did of those but um that was fun so those are and, active um, even today uh, like uh, not really <laughs> covid okay. kind of kind of put a stop oh. to everything as far as like getting groups together and now that we're out, you know mostly out of covid it's you know it's it's just been hard to to start up yeah. the the events again and it's a lot of work <laughs> even without sponsors it's a lot of work and so you know part of me is just like eh you know i want to do my own thing and yeah. you know life has changed a lot in the last couple of years yeah. so but it's all good stuff i used to do um a girls event mhm that i really really enjoyed doing uh, the great chicago she ride mhm and uh that was fun you know i, I wish i had kept up with that but you know uh uh-huh. Yeah, and it was it was a really cool thing for especially like for I mean obviously everybody was mo- welcome but it was mostly for the girls. So mm-hmm. that was fun. That was cool. Mhm. But you know, it's good to know that you've been taking initiatives for uh, you know like organizing something with the distance skating and um, uh, that's yeah. really that's really amazing. It's going to inspire yeah. people for sure. Like how how, how many uh, participants were there with the she ride thing? Like was it a regular the happening ride? the gathering? Yeah. Uh, Oh. Yeah, that first year I think we had like 50 people show up, which is pretty wow. incredible, you know. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty incredible. Uh it was great. I still have pictures all over my Facebook about that, but like um yeah, the first year was like 50, second year was probably around the same. Um third year was not a huge turnout. Mhm. Um you know, that's part of I think all races it's kind of and I think um especially in this area um because we're kind of you know the 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 main um interest i feel like um skaters around here are into are like downhill and sliding mm-hmm. and you know you can you don't come to chicago to do downhill you go to the suburbs of chicago to do downhill so like you know if people in chicago i was doing the push races and it, those just weren't as popular i think as as like the downhill and the um free ride skating. Mhm. So the participation, you know, it was kind of hard. It was a little hard, a little a little bit of a struggle to get people to show up for the push races. Okay. You know, and that's fine. Like I got it. I understood that it, it was kind of the the not cool thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but um but I enjoyed it. So that's why I did it. So and I knew there was at least a handful of people who who enjoyed it as well. So yeah, after the she ride it was, you know, 6 to 10 people would show up to the push races. Okay. which was okay and it was usually the same group of people so it was fun so this is like in 2017 or uh, 18 or so right yeah this was probably all the races i did were between uh, 2011 
and wow. That's... 20 yeah because the first um clark street bomb was hosted in 2011 That's amazing. and he, i was a i was that was the first thing i ever did as far as distance and skating in the city which is of course a completely different experience than skating in the middle of nowhere you know yeah. so it was scary but it was also like you know it was it was one of the most like profound moments where i was like this is where i belong you know <laughs> I but know. yeah i did that yeah yeah, yeah. Please yeah, go ahead, so, go ahead. Uh, I did that from uh, 2011 was the first one, and then the most recent, uh, obviously, was Ultra mm -hmm. um, this past year, um, 2022, February, this past February, yeah, yeah. we did Ultra, so, yeah. but yeah. I didn't even know about longboarding until like 2018, 19 or so, and not even getting yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. amazing, pretty amazing to know that you have organized something in 2011 itself, so it's very inspiring yeah. uh, to talk about. Quick question, like, uh, you like pumping or pushing? Uh, yeah, I just started really pumping for the first time when I got my Pantheon, my mm -hmm. Bandito, so mm -hmm. I've only been pumping for about a month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's also that's also something uh, if you see like the guys who really know how to pump well uh -huh. and how, you know, you watch them and you're like, oh, that's great. I could do that. It's actually a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> All, everything with skating, like that's the main thing with skateboarding is like it is harder than it looks. Mm -hmm. And if they make it look easy, they are good. <laughs> they are amazing. So I've been working on that, but I'm starting to get it. Like the mechanics are starting to come together. And I'm starting to get so, into a little bit of groove, but punk pushing is still pushing is my baby, you know, cause I've been doing uh, that for so long. So I'll automatically go back to pushing when I don't feel like pumping anymore. So <laughs> uh, another quick question, goofy or regular? Both. Both. That's amazing. Both. Yeah. So you're doing <laughs> pushing anyway. So yeah, it, it kind of yeah works, there's a guy. Uh, yeah. There, there's a guy named, um, Steve Makita, and he's uh, mm -hmm. he's he's the one carrying on the uh, tradition of scogging, uh -huh. which is what we, we yeah the scogging of you know uh, it's hard to explain. You'll have to look I, him I, up. I, Just I look understand. up scogging. Yeah, I know scogging. I know <laughs> yeah, scogging. but um, yeah, yeah, if you don't, yeah, um, but he he was the one who kind of you know is advocating for people to do that. So I started doing it just for fun, and then I realized, oh, this is going to be really great for distance because then mm -hmm. you can you don't have to rely just on one stance. You can do both stances. You yes. can switch. You can pump. You can switch again. You know, so that was yeah, definitely That's something I, I I enjoy it, and it's a it's a huge asset um, as far as um, being able to push longer and yeah. avoiding injury. Yes, definitely. It's kind of giving you a break for your legs, you know, both sides. Exactly, you exactly. Them. Um, our old, old people legs. <laughs> and our yeah, knees, you know, we know we got knee problems. <laughs> definitely. And uh, yeah, me being a big size fluff ball, you know, like, it's kind of definitely, <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, you're going to feel it. I feel it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, like, after the uh, post uh, uh, ultra skate event, you know, do you find uh, it's like uh, more people getting into distance skating in Chicago area, or like uh, it's still? Uh, I think not. I mean, the long distance stuff like ultra, mm -hmm. there's a handful of us from Chicago, and I don't think there's been any more from Chicago um, since since I started going the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I mean, it's it, not that, I, yeah, it's not terribly popular, I would say. I mean, there's a ton of people on boards, skateboards, longboards in the city. There's a ton, but like the ones actually like doing distance with us, like five, oh. five people. And oh. I, we know them all, you know, so, and I went with three of them, you know, to the last race or the, the race in 2020. So, yeah, it's not a huge amount. Like it's, it's, skateboarding is huge and longboarding is huge but yeah this this distance thing this ldp thing mm -hmm, is still mm -hmm. very very much a small small yeah. it's catching you know, up. subclass yeah yeah it, i mean hopefully it will but yeah i don't know it, at the same time you kind of want it to stay small i don't know it's you want it to get bigger you want it to stay smaller I don't yeah. know. it's a very conflicting feeling <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, it's going to be hard for us to, you know, like gather people and go work around a group all the time. Anyway, so it's a small, yeah. small group would also be more convenient many times. So yeah, I, and, and but it, the good thing about that is that anybody who, um, sorry, my dog's making weird noises. 
anybody who wants to get into it like we 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 we're always like hey come skate with us like we don't know you you don't know us come on over like it's a very it's a very welcoming uh, that's amazing as far as i found yeah they're very much like oh you don't know what you're doing great we'll teach you you know like we're very everybody's very relaxed and very supportive that's amazing i could see that because like we are across the globe and you could able to organize something to talk about distance skating so i could imagine this in our yep. with your group anyways so if i happen to be there oh yeah would... we get excited too yeah that's it's like hey you have a board you want to skate with us yeah come on out you know we we get all excited so that's, that's amazing so like uh, yeah. mm, uh you've told me already like you go to bo- take your boat to your work and all that like is that the uh you know you're always a go to choice you know for a non motorized transport a distance skating board or like you do some other uh, any other transport like uh, bicycling no. or yeah yeah i i did um i i work a lot closer to home now so like the board is a lot more appealing now is cuz you know i don't have to you know go too far like i'd like distance but you know when i'm going to work i don't want to go that far <laughs> so i've been doing the board a lot um to work uh lately um before then i was riding my bike cuz it was like a 14 mile ride so i was like i'm just going to jump on my bike and plus i had to leave at like 5 o'clock in the morning and wow. i don't have to do that anymore but yeah but the bike was a big choice for me for a while mm-hmm. just out of convenience but yeah no i pretty much just bike and longboard um i'm so spoiled by my longboards that I, going down to a shortboard again is so hard oh it's I so know. hard unless it's for like a really short distance like anything below a 70 mm wheel just feels so small to me that's true that's true. do so. you cruise around your hospital as well i'm like <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 when I, uh i work in a smaller part of a hospital now um but when i used to work in the bigger hospital downtown um mm-hmm. i was very tempted to <laughs> because especially during covid cuz nobody was there you know it was all just restricted down to the to the patients and they were all they were all blocked off in different areas so yeah mm-hmm. it was very tempting to skate through the hospital but i i decided not to risk that <laughs> <laughs> so have you had any uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest moment uh, like oh they're uh, cruising <laughs> which part of the cuckoo's nest here <laughs> which part of that <laughs> having fun probably oh yeah oh i mean yeah you know you have you a little bit but not not too much cuz you know it is a hospital <laughs> i understand like, yeah. what do you carry uh, with your uh, uh, self when you're going for races or like for your rides or what are the essentials yeah. that you take with you the essentials for me are compression sleeves uh, mm-hmm. compression socks mm-hmm. um cuz i've had problems with my achilles uh, tendons before so i always do those and then um you have to wear like i i personally i prefer like running shoes mm mm-hmm. like uh new balance running shoes but obviously everybody's got their preference some people do those like minimal shoes where mm-hmm. where it's basically just a just a little you know sheath for your foot and then that's it mm-hmm. some people like that i can't do that i'm too old for that but um uh also uh the hyd- hydration packs yes. like the camelbacks or and something like that doesn't even have to be that brand mm-hmm. um cuz you you know got to have the water um depending on how far i go i'll bring the i don't know if you've heard of the brand it's called goo gels no it's like g u they're just gels that you know you you open it up and you like you know suck yep. it down for you know every hour or so that you're that you're in motion I un- understand. and it's just like electrolytes electrolytes you know. basically yeah. yeah energy electrolytes all that so i use those at ultra that's a lot cool. um yeah and then uh, you know just water snacks whatever maybe like a granola bar or something like that yeah. really depends it depends on the temperature the conditions the distance you yeah. know but yeah those are basically my essentials that's amazing even i prefer running shoes anyways and uh <laughs> <laughs> that's nice and uh, like when you're going out for the uh, races or for these rides you know like you do you have access to restrooms freely or like do you prefer races wherein like they provide all these facilities for women particularly um i mean personally yeah i i definitely whenever wherever i go i have to like find out where the bathroom is first just because you know Yeah, I understand. Cuz you're you know, you're moving around, you're moving around, you're you're drinking a ton of water like, yeah, yeah. and you know, I'm, I'm not a guy. I have to have a bathroom. <laughs> like I have to have a place to use the restroom like I'm not going to go off into a bush or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um 
So yeah, that for me personally, yeah, that's definitely an essential. Hmm. Lucy, okay. sorry, no, no, that's all right. Lucy, Lucy, hey, come here. Sorry, give me a second. Yep, no hey, issues. Crazy. Sorry, she's being a pain. Uh, hi. This is Lucy. This is the vicious killer. Hey, hush, hush. <laughs> hi, Lucy. <laughs> she says hello. She Probably. says, I'm loud. <laughs> hi. She says hello. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. She's That's my guard right. dog. Quiet. That's a, their family, <laughs> it's all right. We, we uh, understand. Yeah, she's a, she's a pain in the butt. <laughs> all right. So, so, uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. Absolutely understand. I uh, totally get it. So, uh, what would you advise for the female participants, like who are just entering into the races? Like, what would, uh, what kind of gears you would advise? Like, or what, or what are the things they want to do? You know, like when they are stepping into distance yeah. skating. Yeah. Um, I time. mean, it, sure. Uh, it really depends. I mean, I guess the basic essentials are just water. Um, yes. some kind of um, electrolyte replenishment, mm -hmm. um, some kind of snack, mm -hmm. um, depending on how far you're going, something light, mm -hmm. you know, whatever works for you. Uh, definitely a helmet. Mm -hmm. Always wear a helmet. Um, Full face yeah, or whatever sh regular skateboard helmet? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen people wear bike helmets. I mean, whatever, as long as your head's protected. Like, that's a huge thing, especially if you're a beginner. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that, you know, oh, I'm just, I'm just cruising. I'm just, you know, not doing any hills or anything. I don't need a helmet. Like, you kind of need a helmet. Yeah. It's a good idea. But, um, but yeah, yeah, for beginners, yeah. And then um, those would probably be the basics. And then, you know, as you do more racing and do more skating, you, you kind of figure out, like, what works for you That's and what true. you should bring. You know, it's different for everybody. So yeah. that's true. what I've learned, especially with Ultra, because that's such a huge physical thing and it's such a challenge mm -hmm. and i i tried to you know read about what other people did and what what worked for other people because i didn't know mm -hmm. and i realized you know now that we're going into my third year of ultra which hopefully i'll be there this year but we'll see but um i've kind of realized like i got to do what i know works for me even though it's not you mm -hmm. know what everybody else is doing so because uh, I think that was part of why I had such a hard time this past year. I was trying to do everything like that everybody else was doing because it worked for them. But I realized I need to, yeah, you got to try switch and, that around and yeah. do what works for me, you know. Mm -hmm. so, what, so what are your eating habits for uh, races and these rides? Do you have any special yeah. kind of diet for it? Or like uh, you just take the regular food and uh, manage it accordingly? Or what is your... Uh, yeah. What I was really doing, um, especially with the big distance races, I was just trying to keep it light. Mm -hmm. um, no sugar, no heavy meats, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, you know, pickles were a big thing. Pickles and, and like a jar of pickles. And for some reason, that pickle juice, like if you drink the pickle juice straight. Mm -hmm. from the jar while you're skating. I'm like salivating just thinking about it. But uh, <laughs> it's like the most... It's the most wonderful tasting thing you'll ever have when you're, you know, eight hours into a, into a push race. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that that is a big deal for me is having that, like, you know, pickle juice or something uh, equivalent of that. Mm. Um, and uh, I like to use this um, powder supplement. It's it's mm -hmm. uh, the brand is called Extend. OK. And it's got a lot of it's got the BCAAs in it. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly for um, circulation because I, I, my feet tend to go numb when I'm skating for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very annoying. <laughs> you can't skate for very long, you know, yeah. when your feet go numb for so long. Very true. So that helps. Yeah. So that powder helps with my circulation a lot. Like you can feel it. Like, if, I don't know if you've ever tried the uh, BCAA powder, but when you, when it's in your system, it makes your skin tingle. Like you feel like tingly all over Oh, and um, and that really helps because it's your you know it's make helping with your circulation and stuff like that. So that really helps with distance for me. Oh, that's amazing! I do have some uh, plant based uh, protein powder. Uh, it's of chocolate yeah. flavor, but it's I feel like it's more like a chocolate milk, nothing more than that. I didn't have that tingly stuff, but 
yeah <laughs> but anyway yeah. i'm i'm a sports guy now so i feel like i have some protein stuff with me so <laughs> yeah and some protein is great like it just it really yeah i mean if it works for you if it works for you while you're skating yeah. like do yeah. it yeah. that's true thank you thanks for sharing mm -hmm. all those details but and uh like what kind of gps apps do you use like with your mobile phone i've been i used to use endomondo i really liked endomondo when it was still around but um uh since since that went under I, i started using strava mm -hmm. and i've just stuck with that for for a long time now and it's fine you do have the it's great subscription they, for strava uh no i got the free version yeah, me too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. i know I, i hate i hate spending money on on stuff like that but mm -hmm. but it works you know for what for yeah. what it, you know i yeah. need it for as like as I'm, works, I'm, that's fine yeah i like to just record my miles and mm -hmm. record my routes and that's it like i don't need it, anything fancy Cool. Do you use a GPS watch? I do have a um a uh, Fitbit. Ah. Oh. Fitbit Versa three, mm -hmm. and uh, it's good too. It, like I've been using Fitbit for about two years now, and this is a pretty pretty fancy version, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know. I can I can um, put stuff like this on my uh, my employer's bill. They pay for stuff like that, so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's great. I like it because. Um, I don't I don't use it so much to record my mm -hmm. rides mm -hmm. but it will automatically pick up like if you are going for a run mm -hmm. or if you're swimming or something like that like it'll pick that up and it'll record like your heart rate and how many mm -hmm. miles you've done and all that but you know I don't really use it specifically to track it's more just to track my um everyday activity Oh yeah that, that's so. cool actually that's that's I love it uh, Yeah Obvi obviously yeah. like that's that would be the uh, you know like uh, a, a everyday attitude for a, a commoner you know like even uh, people would love that you know like uh, easy stuff you know that's going to help uh, but still you yeah. want to have some statistics for what you're doing you know that's exactly yeah. exactly that's amazing like and uh, i i learned through your images that you've mm, been riding with uh, mr joe mazon and uh, he's uh yeah he's a great uh, distance skater his record is unbeaten uh, till date you know with the ultra skate miami so uh, how, how do you yeah. know him like uh, how yeah. is he helping with your distance skating or like your yeah intro? joe's been around since god he came to the clark street bomb the second year mm -hmm. i think i think he was there the second year or the third year He was there early on oh. and I remember because he at one point because he was like one of those guys where he could be on you know the crappiest board around and still beat everybody by like 15 minutes you know and it yeah. was just so casual for him and I learned later on that he was um he was a um a runner mm. he was like a distance runner a track runner or something like that mm. um so that's where he gets that but once he once he started to like hone his abilities and like really work on mm -hmm. his speed and his technique and all that and his mm -hmm. nutrition like he just he just obviously you know he took off he was just he's a legend <laughs> and he used to he used to live in the suburbs um of chicago oh. so when he moved to colorado we were kind of like oh like our hometown hero has left you know uh -huh. but yeah he he's great like he's just the ultimate H him and uh, Alyssa montero who used to be um oh. she moved away as well she used to be like the female version of joe you know <laughs> so in my in my mind she was like those two were like the the pillars of of distance and and short distance skating oh. um because they just they want they want everything they literally just put their minds to it they they trained they got the gear they went out and did the miles and then they came to the races and just just blew everybody out of the water so they're both very inspiring still to this day <laughs> that's amazing i i understand joe mazon was uh, into uh, automotive industry and then he became a medic like you had any part yeah, of that yeah yeah Oh no, I mean after he left I kind of, you know, I we don't talk like on a regular basis, you oh, know, but oh. um but yeah, no, I've definitely been following him and I, I definitely told him when I when I bought his board. So <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, he's just, you know, he's a talented guy. He's yeah, got he's got a he's got a lot of skills in a lot of different areas. So yeah. So yeah, it's really cool to watch him. Yep. Yeah. thanks for uh, coming out with your female inspiration, you know, like as in like uh, I kind of probably left out that question. 
That is, oh no! Yeah, talking about Lizzie it, it's, uh, was definitely it's going to inspire more people, you know, to point out that. Yeah, you know, no, thank you. Yeah, uh, I don't know much about the tattoos. Like, uh, who is your favorite tattoo artist? Tattoo artist? Yeah, I don't really have a favorite. I have um, three different tattoos that were from three different artists. So I just kind of go around, and I, I really had no plan for for. A couple of them, you know, I just sort of went to the tattoo shop and was like, oh, that's cool. I'll take that one, you know, mm -hmm. like my most recent one. Oh, no, I have four now. Yeah, sorry, I lost count. Um, my most recent one, I just literally walked into this. It was a brand new shop near near where my boyfriend lives. And, and uh, we looked through their books and I said, oh, that's cool. I want that. And that was that. I just got it. So, yeah, oh. pretty random. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And like, you're still a member of Foskate IDSA? Uh, uh, you do IDSA, yeah, mm. oh, that's yeah, cool. yeah. That's still, cool. still a member. Uh, still doing the virtual races right now. Oh. I got to do my. I did the the two k, the five k, and the ten k. Mm -hmm. And now I'm I'm hopefully uh, in the next week I'll be doing the uh, one hour skate. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, guess... Got to find the time. <laughs> <laughs> so guess that brings to the end of our session. So. Uh, thanks for uh, accepting my uh, invite and being generously, uh, you know, like talking about uh, all the inspiring stuff, you know, like without any inhibitions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like what would you tell to a, a fellow, uh, you know, like uh, a female participant who are getting into distance skating? The stage is yours. You can, yeah. uh, you can yeah. uh, say a few words I, to them. Yeah, uh, I the would say. Long just... distance skating community in general also. Yeah, uh, I would just say, just do it. Just do it. Like, if you feel like doing it, like, don't question yourself. Like, nobody, it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, it doesn't matter if you're going to, like, you're going to fall, like, everybody falls. You know, I've been doing this 17 years. I still fall, okay? <laughs> I fall all the time, and it sucks. But, like, it's so worth it. And, you know, just don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be, there's always going to be a community even if it's a small one there's always going to be a community that you can join and if you don't have a community to join you mm -hmm. create that community mm. you 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 are the one who creates that community and and you just learn from each other you learn what you can and mm -hmm. don't worry if, if if it's hard and you're not getting it like don't worry about any of that just enjoy it because mm -hmm. it's worth it it's so worth it so that's amazing that's yeah. amazing <laughs> Like, oh, There's so but, much to talk about when it comes to skating. I feel I hope I hope it was all coherent <laughs> this whole thing because there's so much to cover. <laughs> I, I had a blast actually because like this, this is definitely uh, new to us. So uh, any yeah. wonderful in, uh, information from the people who have been doing this for quite a long time would definitely help us. So it I had yeah. a blast. I had a blast. So, yeah, uh, and, I, and I wanted to tell you, I wanted to tell you when you told me where you were from, I actually looked it up because, you know, I, I'd never heard of it. So, yep. but yeah, no, I looked it up. I even like saw like geographically where you live and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just amazed. I'm amazed that, that you're able to do any skating. Like, oh, I, I can't. Thank you. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Because to me, like, I'm completely spoiled. Like we have streets all over the place and they're clear and there's bike lanes and, you know, there I have, I have endless miles of, of road and i just couldn't you know Thank i was you. very very surprised to see that you were skating and yeah it's really cool it's really cool that you do that Thank you. That really means a lot to me now. Yeah, it no, kind it's of great. Gives like me I... some boost and you know, like it's going to keep yeah. me going for a long that's amazing. Um, uh, yeah. who would you uh, uh like to be interviewed next like who would you recommend as such? Uh, um yeah, oh man there's so many people. Uh i would recommend let's see the people, uh, pretty much anybody I skate with in Chicago, uh, uh, Garrett Garrett Carp is mm -hmm, a good choice. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's been in my group for a while. Uh, Dallas Yanez, mm -hmm. um, he's he's been around since like 2011, 2012 in the skate world. So, and he was a skateboarder to start with. Uh, he's great. Um, as far as girls, oh man, who are the girls who can talk to us? Man. I could talk to Delilah, Delilah mm -hmm. Clement, I believe her last name is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, pretty much any of the Chicago people you can talk to, like, they're great. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah, Thank you I so mean, much. yeah, they're all great. <laughs> I, I can name everybody I know. They'd be all great to talk to. If I may, uh, uh, you know, like request you, like if you could share the uh, Instagram handles or their IDs uh, over the chat message, you know, it'll be helpful for me. Yeah, you know, I'll let you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Uh, I just want to say something to the audience. Uh, as such who will be watching this video you know like all i have to say is like uh, miss uh, uh, amanda latoria was so generous that uh, she kind of uh, let me be myself only then this uh, interview kind of happened you know like i said she allowed me to make mistakes she allowed me to you know like uh, do some typo errors when right from the start with the chat messages you know like she allowed me to myself be myself only then like she kept me you know like cool vibe kept that cool vibe all the time and it kind of really helped me to go on with uh, all the things that we kind of planned most of the stuff you know and uh, sh i'm so thankful for that nandri vanakkam for that oh, yeah. you know, like this probably might be used to the yoga stuff so you know namaste's uh, gesture yeah oh yeah oh yeah we so, we 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 try to do yoga here uh, <laughs> i know i know we're not doing it justice but we we like doing it <laughs> i get it <laughs> so, thank you so much ma'am thanks for no, being thank here you. it means a lot to a lot no, of I people over it. here they're going to get inspired for i'm sure. so glad i'm so glad yeah and i'm so glad everybody here there are people out there who, who want to do it because i that's so cool to me thank you thank you and uh, yeah. uh, kindly give me some time to edit this video and put that online i'll let you know whenever i edit and uh you know and I put that online immediately yeah. i'm just buying some yeah time. yeah for sure Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Enjoy your evening. Have a wonderful uh, yeah. week. Weekend. All right. Weekend. Yes. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Almost the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> One more day for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, All I'll, right. Yeah. No problem. Yep. Yeah. Uh, shall I end the call? By the way. Um. Yeah. I mean, if you're done, I'm, you know, I'm cold to go. <laughs> you. you Probably might be of used to all the Indian tech support by now, but hope I did not sound that <laughs> stereotyped version as you no. see in the movies. Okay. No, 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 no. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful right. uh, weekend. Bye. All right. You too. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.